King Solomon was noted for his intellect, riches, and writings in the Bible. His dominion stretched from the Euphrates River in the north to Egypt in the south when he became king in 967 BCE. The construction of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem was his finest achievement. Almost all we know about him comes from the biblical writings King I and Chronicles II. The story begins. Solomon was the son of King David and Bathsheba, his mother. Solomon was David's youngest son, yet he promised Bathsheba that he would be the future king. With the help of General Joab and Abiathar the priest, David's eldest son, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, David's fifth wife, proclaimed himself king. While David was still living, David had his servants carry Solomon to the Gihon Spring, where the priest anointed him. Solomon was the heir to his father's vast fortune. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. King David died of natural causes in 961 BCE, was buried in Jerusalem and, according to the Hebrew and Greek scriptures, his piety and genealogy aided in the building of God's eternal kingdom. Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, for you are a wise man. David said to his son Solomon before his death, 1 Kings chapter 2. Solomon was first met with hostility. Joab, son of Zeruiah, and the priest Abiathar, two of David's closest advisers, allied with Adonijah. When Adonijah came to Solomon and asked for the king's servant as a bride, Solomon saw it as a disguised threat to take over his kingdom and dispatched a messenger to murder him. He exiled Abiathar to the Anatoth city. Solomon then carried out his father's final orders, which were to murder both Joab and Shimei, son of Gera, one of his father's adversaries. As a result, Solomon was able to overcome the final possible dangers to his kingdom. He then placed his supporters to positions of power in the military, administration and religion. Although King Solomon was young, he soon became known for his wisdom. People from surrounding nations also came to hear Solomon's wisdom. He composed 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. He wrote the Song of Songs, the Book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. The first and most famous incident of his cleverness as a judge was when two women came to his court with a baby whom both women claimed as their own. Solomon threatened to split the baby in half. One woman was prepared to accept the decision, but the other begged the king to give the live baby to the other woman. Solomon then knew the second woman was the mother. I'm sure you love that. If you are in support of his wisdom, kindly hit the like button. If not, still hit the like button. Solomon's prosperity and success were also due to ingenious reforms and innovations, such as improved defense measures, the expansion of the royal court, financial windfalls from more sophisticated taxation, labor conscriptions of Canaanites and Israelites, tributes and gifts from foreign countries under Solomon's influence, and a land and sea trading system that utilized the king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he created cedars as plentiful as the lowland sycamores, according to the Hebrew scriptures, 2 Chronicles chapter 1. The Queen of Sheba, who arrived from southern Arabia, paid one of Solomon's most famous trips. Solomon's demise occurred as he grew older. He'd taken a lot of foreign women and permitted them to worship other gods. He even created altars for his foreign wives' sacrifices. With Solomon's realm, he imposed high taxes on the people, causing them to become enraged. He also employed individuals as soldiers, leading officers, and leaders of his cavalry and chariots. He gave the tribes of Judah special rights, which enraged the northern tribes. Instead of one of Solomon's sons, the prophet Ahijah of Shiloh predicted that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, would rule over ten of the twelve tribes. 
Solomon died in Jerusalem after ruling Israel for 40 years. He was buried at David's city. Rehoboam, his son, succeeded him as a king. Solomon's dominion was lost during Rehoboam's control and his kingdom was divided in two halves. Thanks for watching. Click on the bell icon to be notified for more videos and share this with your friends.